What's up guys, welcome back to another video. And I've been talking to a few, I guess, YouTuber friends of mine. We've been talking about the PSP. I actually watched uh, Larry's video the other day and he showed all the PSP games that he picked up. And, you know, I think about as a collector, you know, what systems do I actually collect for? Because I don't collect for like every video game system. Uh, the PSP is just one of those systems that, yes, I do collect for that system. I don't buy like every single game. I don't want the whole library, but there's a lot of good stuff out there. And let's just get right into it. Okay, so anyway, this is my model PSP 2000. I've had this thing for many years. As you can see, it's beat up. It's got uh, stickers and all kinds of shit taping it together. This thing works. Now, this is a 2000 model. I have owned two models previous to this. I had the Red Kratos model. I got that when it came out. Uh, I think that game, it came with that God of War game. It was a red console and it had Kratos. I guess it's Kratos. It had like a white silhouette of him like on, on the back right here. And then it came with Superbad, the UMD DVD. And I always thought that was crazy how that rated R movie came bundled in with the PSP. But anyway, this is my PSP. A lot of people have said they prefer, which is weird because you can't hook it up to a TV. But a lot of people that I know prefer the 1000 model because it's more sturdy. The UMD tray right here is a little more sturdy. But, you know, I'm careful with my stuff. And uh, yeah, I just love this console. You can mod and hack these. I got custom firmware running on a chip. And it's it's so easy to download that stuff, and you can pretty much just download any PSP game, any PS1 game, play it natively on your PSP, um, and you can do this with all models of PSP, even the PSP Go, which, uh, here's my PSP Go right here, I've had this thing for, got this for 40 bucks at the flea market, um, yeah, <laughs> these things go for quite a bit now, yeah, there's my PSP Go, it kind of turns on as soon as you flip this thing open, but... Love this thing. Uh, you can do everything off of a memory card with this thing. And I'll show you some accessories that I actually have for the PSP. So the first thing that you're going to want, if you have a 2000 or a 3000 model, you're going to want this uh, this TV cable right here. This is actually a Sony branded one. It's just uh, component in, you know, component in. And let's say you have a TV, a newer TV that doesn't use component. Just get a cheap converter off eBay. It's like 10 bucks. I've had this thing for years. It's cheap. Works fine. This is how I play this thing in like hotel rooms and stuff. You know, just get a double female ended HDMI, uh, I guess, um, extension. Bring two, yeah, or uh, <laughs> bring two HDMI cables with you. That extension. Bring this stuff. You can play your damn PSP anywhere on any TV. And again, I went to Ocean City, Maryland, for you know vacation for you know, a few years. I remember bringing this thing with me. This one in particular. Now, like I said, I had that Kratos. Uh, I remember buying that Kratos, uh, whatever special edition one from Best Buy. I also had a 1000 that I tried to actually do some mods on, like some system mods, but I ended up messing the system up and I had to, I just parted it out or I threw it away, but, um, I will get another PSP soon. I mean, you know, I figure I've had this thing for so long and it's so wore out. I might get a 3000 model. Um, I'm not sure if the PSP street, that one that came out in Europe, I don't know if that newer model is compatible with the TV. I don't know if it has this hookup at the bottom, but if it does, I'd probably get the street model. Um, if it's the newer model, you know, because I know replacing the lasers inside of these things is difficult. But um, some of the other stuff, I got all the accessories for the PSP Go in here. I got uh, pretty much a cable for the Go. It's just like this cable right here, but it's for the PSP Go. And another thing, I was going through my stuff and ran across this the other day. And this one's actually sealed. This is a, a cradle for the PSP Go. So what you can do is, is you can play, especially if you have this thing modded, right? Which is easy to do. You can run all your emulators, all your retro emulators, your Neo Geo, your SNES, your Genesis, you know, all that stuff, full ROM sets, whatever, right? PC Engine. You can do all that on here. You can also play full library of PSP games, full library of PS1 games on here, take it on the go, dock it. It's compatible with the PS3 controller, play it just like a Switch. So, you know, in my mind, you know, I feel like Nintendo really got the idea from the Switch, you know, from this right here. Um, you know, because of that, you know, as you guys probably are well aware, if you're into the PSP, these things are, you know, god awful expensive now. Um, I had a loose one floating around here somewhere that I actually used with this, and I, I, I love it. Let me just say, first and foremost, I love it, but I don't know where that is, but I have this sealed one. I got at the flea market years ago. Um, as a matter of fact, I was in a retro store a few years ago. And, um, it was just when the price on these started to go up. And the guy had like three of them and he wanted like 
I don't know, 10 bucks a piece. And I, I, you know, I shouldn't have said this, but I was like, man, you might want to look them up before you sell them for 10 bucks a piece, right? I was just trying to look out for them. It was a place that I go to on the regular, right? But anyway, this is the the cradle. This is probably like one of the crown jewels in my PSP uh, collection. Um, as obscure as this thing might be, but it's just like a Switch dock for a Switch, only it's for a PSP Go. So sucks the PSP Go doesn't have a UMD, but with, you know... The SD cards, it's really not that big of a deal. And to be honest with you, I'd kind of rather run everything off of an SD card. Um, anyway, let's get into the games. Okay. First game, and this is one of the first games I remember really loving and getting on the PSP. And that is Lunar, the Silver Star Harmony. Now, this is just yet again another port of Lunar. You know, it came out on the Sega CD, at least from what I remember. Um, the first one I ever played was uh, Silver Star Story Complete on the PS1. That's the version I think I love the most. I think a lot of you guys are like that too. You know, I've heard people say Sega CD, but this is a solid version. Now, the sprite work and stuff's different in this game. Um, you know, it sucks work and designs wasn't around for this, right? But yeah, um, this is probably the only collector's edition. Uh, that I have for the PSP, um, yeah, you know, it's probably pricey now, what the fuck, I don't know, 50 bucks, I have no idea, but, um, you know, I got this when it came out, so, uh, this one's in pretty good condition, a little scuff right there for me owning it over the years, but anyway, Lunar Silver Star Harmony. All right, next game, we're just gonna fly through these, because I got probably, like, 50 games, but this is a visual novel that I guess our system works worked on for the PSP, I never played it, you know, it's probably what I paid for it, 15 bucks. So this is probably one I would actually get rid of. You know, I'm not really into getting rid of PSP games, but if any of you guys want this, you know, hit me up. I probably will get rid of that. Um, this is one that I thoroughly enjoyed. This is Tales of the World Radiant Mythology. Now, there was a few sequels to this that released only in Japan, and I've heard, you know, rumors on talk boards and stuff online that they were going to do fan translated versions of the text i hope they do if they're out there let me know in the comments i'd love to download them but uh you know i would equate this to like uh if you guys ever played super robot ties and OG saga endless frontier or project crosser one and two on the ds or 3ds it brings in all those different characters from all those different stories you know bandai namco or different companies um kind of brings them together and this is it kind of does the same thing here only it's just like you know different characters from different tales of games but uh you know i, I really like this but the only thing i didn't like this about this game and this is one thing i really don't like about certain rpgs is i like the character to be set you know when i start the game i don't want to have to create a character and i, I believe in this game you had to create your character and uh, you know it's not that big of a deal but you know anyway this is a good one i recommend it shouldn't be that expensive that's tales of the world radiant mythology um Okay, next one. Uh, probably one I found at a flea market years ago. Never played it. Tactics over Ogre. I've heard about it. Um, I heard it's good. Maybe I should try it out. You know, let me know in the comments below. Um, here we go. Third birthday. This is I. Be I believe this is the third game in the Parasite Eve series. And um, God, I I remember. I've had this for many years. Uh, I actually played this, but I, I'll be honest with you. I forget. Um, I forget what happens in this game. I just remember it being related to the Parasite Eve series. But again, you know, I'm sure you guys could tell me about it in the comments below. I'm sure that's somebody's, like, favorite PSP game. Uh, Blade Dancer Lineage of Light. Um, got played this a while back. And uh, I remember going through this game with a guide. And this game was hard as nails. But, uh, you know, decent game. You know, again, this is probably one that you could find pretty cheap. Most of these games are pretty cheap, except for... A few. I don't own any of the crazy like shooters on the system or nothing like that. And you know, I wish I did, but I'm just not trying to kick out money like that when you can download them and play them on an SD card. So easy. That's how I do it. Anyway, Valhalla Knights 2. That's probably overpaying for that. You can probably find this now for two, three bucks. This is a good one. Jean Dark. This is like a retelling of the story of Joan of Arc, but in an RPG, and they have they like have like these voice actors that speak English that may have like French accents and stuff. It's a good game. Good game. Should be on a cheap. Here's one generation of chaos. I, uh, this is probably one that I picked up and never played guys. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Should I, play, should I try that one out? Okay. This is a pal, a pal game. This is breath of fire three. Now, I don't know what this game... I remember a while back I bought this on uh, eBay. And this was the the way to play Breath of Fire on the PSP if you wanted a physical copy. And um, it's probably... I'll be honest with you. This game's probably still pretty cheap. But it's exactly the same. 
is this. So if you want to play the PSP version, I mean, you can play either one, the PS1 or the PSP port on your PSP, honestly, if you just want to play off the SD card. But I'm just letting you know it's the same game, but Breath of Fire 3. But this only came out in the PAL regions, I do believe. I don't think it came out here in the U.S., but I could be wrong about that. Uh, let's see, we have Disgaea, Afternoon of Darkness. Never played it, but I guarantee you it's a strategy RPG. I guarantee you that. Oh, this is probably, okay, this is probably my favorite RPG on the system. I like this one better than the Port of Luna, all right? Hexy's Force. Um, just a good, just a good RPG. I remember I played this and I beat this in, with Cecilia in uh, Ocean City. I'll tell you what, though, I never played through this with Levant. Maybe I should play through with Levant. I remember I just played with, through with Cecilia and I really enjoyed it and uh, never got around to playing through with Levant. So I should probably play through this with Levant. I got all my old save files and stuff, so... Yeah, two epic RPGs in one. I only played one of the two. It's probably doing this game a great injustice, but um, this is probably the, the RPG I recommend most on the system. But I've heard many people say this is their favorite. I'm right in the uh, in camp with them. But anyway, Hexy's Force, great RPG. Here we have Final Fantasy II. Now, this is just one I never opened because at the time you could just uh, you know download the games and play them that way. But yeah, 10, 10 bucks at Kmart back when Kmart. I don't even know if Kmart's still around, but yeah, brand new. Just never opened it. I, don't, I probably never will. <laughs> okay, here we have Miyamata IR Chronicle. This has like one of those like kids fan service games. At least it starts out that way. Like I remember like this character right here, him like he just had this like strong opposition about being in the presence of children. And it was kind of weird and off putting to be honest with you, but uh, it looks like Arc System Works worked on this game, but you know, pretty good RPG. It's got like the cool sprite work, and um, you know, I, I I enjoyed it. The battle system's not the not the greatest, a little little dated, but I recommend it though. It's a it should be a cheap game, but anyway, Mia Mana IR Chronicle. And here is a port of Final Fantasy One. Now I kind of think these Final Fantasy ports on the PSP are I prefer these to the ports on like the DS and stuff like that. I just like the I like the graphics. I like the screen better. I like playing on a on a Sony product better than a, a DS or a 3DS. I mean I love the DS and 3DS, but I'll tell you what, a DS and a 3DS ain't no fucking PSP, I'll tell you that. And you guys know what I'm talking about if you play RPGs on the PSP. But anyway, there's the port of Final Fantasy on the Sony PSP. Uh, here's a sought after game legend of heroes trails in the sky i'm sure this is probably one that came with a collector's edition you know whatever i wish i could have had the soundtrack for some of those collector's editions because i rip them use them in youtube videos and stuff like that but yeah in the legend of heroes series and you know falcom game you know they're all they're all great and, and uh yeah played this a while back yeah i recommend it it shouldn't be too bad this is probably honest with this one's probably up in the 50 dollar range now i don't know i haven't Seen it for sale in a while, but Metal Gear Acid 2. This one came with some 3D glasses. I never used them, though. Isn't that weird? I guess they tried to do the 3DS thing, right? Anyway, Metal Gear Acid 2. This is a good one. Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions. Um, this is one of the... I think this might have been not a launch title, but I think this came out early on in the system's life cycle. Um... I, everyone talked about this, and I never even played through this game entirely, but uh, when this came out, this was one of the games, like all my buddies that played RPGs on PS1 and stuff like that, they went nuts over this. But yeah, Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions. This is a good one. This one was developed in uh, Korea, I think, but Crimson Gem Saga, just a good, good old turn-based RPG. If you like those PS1 era RPGs, I, I can't recommend this one enough. This is like one of the great PSP RPGs that were released on the system, at least to me, anyway. Crimson Gem Saga. All right, here we have Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. Now, I've heard people, and I heard Larry. Larry, I heard you the other day talking about you like this game, buddy. Um, looks like this is the favorites version. They probably sold a lot of these, huh? But, yeah, I played through this a little bit. You know, I like the battle system in this. This is good. Yeah, this is a good game, but I like it. I enjoyed it. But, yeah. Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. It should be cheap. They made a lot of them. Okay, here we have Star Ocean Second Evolution. Okay, they just re-released uh, the uh, a port of Star Ocean, the first Star Ocean game for like PS4 and Switch and stuff. I actually downloaded it on the Switch. 
Um, but there's first departure on the PSP. I don't have that. These are just hard to find. This is the only one I've ever found in my area. Um, it's complete, you know. Good game, though. Good Star Ocean game. I, I highly recommend this if you can find these. These are, God, guys, some of these PSP RPGs, these things are hard to find. They're harder to find than, like, the PS1 RPGs and stuff. PS2, right? But, yeah, I recommend it. It's a good game. Star Ocean Second Evolution. But you can just download them and play them on an SD card. All right. This is Tales of Eternia, or as you guys may know this game, Tales of Destiny 2. Same game. I mean, yeah, same game. Nothing different. Um, there's two versions, actually, of this PSP uh, port. Uh, there's a original version that has a, a glitch in the game that doesn't allow you to advance after a certain point, which sucks. And then there's the glitch-free version. Um, this one's sealed because I just have it downloaded on an SD card. So I, you know, I don't know, maybe you guys might know. I'll, I'll let you guys look at the packaging. If you guys know about the glitch free version, um, you know, let me know in the comments down below, but you know, this is the, the one I have. Um, and they clearly labeled it as an import, right? To get all the, all the money they could for it, but it's sealed. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. I'm glad I have it in my, you know, collection, my small collection of video games, but I, you know, cause I'm a huge Tales of fan. And, you know, Tales of Destiny 2 is one that I liked on the system. Everyone likes that game that's played. It's a good Tales of game. Um, Sprite works pretty good. But anyway, Tales of Eternia on the PSP. I bet a lot of y'all didn't know that came out on the PSP. There was a few games that came out in Europe that we never gotten. That was one I found. I was late to the party on that one, so don't feel bad. Anyway, Wild Arms XF. This is a very good grid-based Wild Arms game. Um, you know, I liked it anyway. I thought it was good. Story's good. Graphics are good. Battle system on point with this. Um, I remember for a while there, this thing was getting kind of, I mean, it's always been kind of obscure, but this thing was getting pricey for a minute, but I remember the price dropped and it's probably still, I'd say hovering around the $30 range, but you know, I highly recommend this game for that. You know, this is one of the gooder, gooder, <laughs> this is one of the better, this is one of the gooder RPGs I played on the system. <laughs> anyway, Wild Arms XF. All right, this is a port of the original Valkyrie Profile. This game is, I would say this is the definitive version of Valkyrie Profile. You know, if you guys played it on the PS1, you know, great game. You know, I, I see this game for sale a lot at retro stores. It's like 20 bucks. Like, this is this is a good, oh man, you guys need to get this. If you like physical video games and you're a fan of, like, PS1 era RPGs, you're not going to get much better than Valkyrie Profile. This thing's got a great uh, turn-based, timing-based, uh, you know, battle system. You know, if you like the, uh, if you, again, if you like Super Robot Ties and OG Saga, Endless Frontier, I think that you'd like the battle system in Valkyrie Profile. And this is, uh, this port's called Valkyrie Profile Leneth. And, you know, I got the guide for it, and I'm a big Valkyrie Profile fan. But, yeah, you should be able to find this for, like, around 20 bucks. You know, I always see it for 20 bucks, and... I definitely recommend it at that price point. Okay, I'm going to roll through some more here, guys. All right, here we have an action game, uh, Alien Syndrome, Sega game. Been a while since I played this one, but just uh, another cheap uh, PSP game. This one's actually pretty good. It's got a pretty good, uses makes use of the PSP's uh, you know, limited controller. Uh, doesn't have dual analog or anything like that, but this one plays pretty good. Up next, we have Ghost in the Shell. Now, I remember liking this version more than I liked. I mean, the PS1 game is great, but this came out on the PS2 as well. I actually just sold a copy of this on the PS2. Didn't like that port as much, but uh, this is the better of the two games, in my opinion. You know, a little bit pricey for a PSP game. I'm probably still around that price point now, but recommend it if you're a PSP fan. You know, this is one to go for, but Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. Here is Dissidia. This is pretty much a uh, Final Fantasy fighting game. I bet you could probably find this game new right now, cheaper than $10. This is one of those decent games, pretty good game. If you like fighting games, it's, it's good. Um, you know, I like it. I enjoyed it. Enjoyed the PS4 game as well. But this is one of those halfway decent games that actually came out on the PSP that you can get pretty cheap. So anyway, there's uh, one of the Dissidia games. I remember there was a couple, a couple ports or whatever that came out on the PSP. All right, here we have Street Fighter Alpha 3 on the PSP. Now, you know, when you see a Street Fighter game, you know, I like fighting games. I don't really like fighting games on portable systems, though. Um, yeah, it's just me. But anyway, there's Street Fighter Alpha 3. I don't know if there's more than one game on this disc. I don't ever remember even playing this. I just got it because there's a Street Fighter game on the PSP. And, 
you know, again, I collect on this system. This is a system I actually do collect for. And, you know, this is probably one you can get cheap to. I bet you this is one of those ones you can get cheaper than $12 brand new right now. Lord of Arcana, you know, Square Enix. Uh, I don't know if this is like a real time strategy game. I don't know. I know this is a pretty cheap game that, you know, Larry actually, uh, in his video, he actually said a lot of good things about this game. I never played it, but anyway, Lord of Arcana. Now we have Motorstorm Arctic Edge. I'm not a huge racing uh, fan. I, you know, I like Mario Kart and the arcade racing stuff. Who doesn't? But um, this one's decent. And this game is so cheap online. I actually looked at the price on this recently. It's like 4 or $5, like brand new shipped. Um, you know, if you like racing games, you'll probably like this. It's a really cheap game on the PSP. One of the better, cheaper games I've ever seen on the system. But anyway, Motorstorm Arctic Edge. Okay, here we have Phantom Brave, um, you know, NIS America game. Never played this RPG. Is it any good? You know, I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below, but Phantom Brave. Okay, here's one of the games in the Legend of Heroes series. I showed you Trails in the Sky. This is Legend of Heroes, Tear of Vermilion. There's another Legend of Heroes game on the PSP. These are getting really hard to find now. I bet these are probably raising in price too um there's one of them i still need that i haven't played but i played this uh, a while back it's decent you know all them falcom games are good like the yeez games but anyway legend of heroes tier of vermilion and here's mana kamiya student alliance this is like one of those uh i never really played this but i know this is like one of those like heavy crafting games but you know again I said PSP is a system I collect games for. When you see games like this, and I probably got this at the flea market for a couple bucks, you pick them up. Anyway, Mana Kamiya. Let me know if I'm mispronouncing that in the comments because a lot of times I don't know how to pronounce that real crazy stuff. Okay, here we have Fantasy Star Portable 2. This is like one of those uh, online games on the PSP. I don't, I don't know if you can get your PSP online anymore and play this game. Maybe, you know, I don't know. But, uh, you know, this is more for uh, the, the battle system and the story on this thing, obviously. But, you know, I think this is one of the more sought-after and collectible games on the system. You know, I don't know, but let me know. Fantasy Star Portable 2 on the PSP. Another fighting game. Here's Dark, Starkle, Dark Stalkers. Dark Stalkers Chronicle. Um, I have, I've had a few copies of this over the years. But, again, this is one of those games you can get on the system really cheap. Probably, I'd say online. Maybe less than ten, brand new. This ain't gonna cost you a bunch of money. But anyway, Dark Stalk Dark Stalkers cry Ugh, can't pronounce that. Dark Stalkers Chronicle. Another fighting game, Guilty Gear. Um one of these games, I don't know if it's Dark Stalkers or Guilty Gear. I think it's the Guilty Gear game. It's not just a fighting game, it's or it's like a more of like a beat 'em up, you know. I haven't played this in a while, but I have played this game. Cheap, right? But, yeah, I think this one's like a beat-em-up. Let me know in the comments. Okay, here's one that I found UMD only. Um, I don't know why I have a Final Fantasy manual in there, but uh, this is a Persona, a remake of Persona on the PSP. And, uh, yeah, played this a while ago. It's good. Never played the PS1 version, but I've heard a lot of people say they really prefer the PSP ports better. But this is just like custom cover art I printed for this thing. You know, when I find games like this, you know, obviously these don't come across your lap every day. Um, you know, oh, this is Persona 3, that's right, Persona 3 Portable, so this is a port of the third game, this game came out on the PS2, I believe, yeah, PS2, anyway, this is a port of Persona 3, and I have, yeah, okay, so this is a port of Persona 1, again, I printed some really shitty cover art for this, I uh, just found this, you know, disc only, or I guess UMD, uh, UMD only, um, hmm, Looks like I paid, what did I get this day? Mobile Light Force, that's a good game. And uh, Persona, huh. Well, because I saved a receipt on that one, but this is a port of Persona 1. Decent RPG on the PSP. I don't have Persona 2. Now, these all games came out with, like, collector's editions with, like, I guess, like, soundtracks and art books and stuff. I don't have any of that. I just had these two UMDs that I printed shitty cover art for, but very proud to have these in the collection. That's Persona 1 and Persona 3. 
Okay, here's two more. One's complete. Obviously, this one I printed cover art for. It's kind of faded, but uh, I would like to print some better cover art for this. But this is Yee's 1 and 2 Chronicle. Um, the re that's Regen. That's where I got this game from. They sell... Uh, you know, they sell you the PSP games in PSP cases and actually just print some generic cover art, you know, right here. But I saved that in the inside of the case. Actually, I don't know. I might leave that like this. I kind of like that now that I look at it. But anyway, there's another port. There's a few ports of this game, but this is Yee's 1 and 2. This is a very, actually, a very good game on the system. Um, this is Yee's Oath and Phil Ghana. Um, great. I think this is, so this is Yee's 6, I do believe, but... Great RPG. This one's complete with its manual. Mr. Larry said that this game's going for a couple dollars now. Um, this one wasn't uh, that pricey when I got it, but I've had it for a, quite, a, quite a while. Um, but the, anyway, these are the two Yeez games, and they actually form Yeez when you have them spined out. I don't have Yeez. I think Yeez 7 that came out on PSP. I don't have that. I need to get that. Yeah, I need to get that. That one's going to cost me a few dollars, but you know, one day. I'll have it one day. And it'll look good spined out. I'll make sure I get a case for that, even if I got to print my own cover art. Anyway, here we go. Mega Man X Maverick Hunter. Fun 2D side-scrolling Mega Man game. Um, not going to strongly criticize this game. It's got its flaws, but, you know, pretty fun. And uh, it should be pretty cheap. You know, I, I think that you could probably find, again, this is another one of those games you can probably find new online for cheaper than the, the $9 that I paid for this. But anyway, Mega Man X. Maverick Hunter. Here's a good one. Mr. Larry talked about this one on his video, but Castlevania The Dracula X Chronicles. Not going to say anything more than what Larry said. Two ports of uh, you know, Castlevania games on the UMD that are great. And uh, This one shouldn't cost you an arm and a leg. This one's kind of like Valkyrie Profile. I see it go for like that $20 price point. Um, but yeah, great game. Great game. If you're a PSP owner, you need this game in your collection. Here's uh, Yidra Union. Again, an RPG I've never played. Now, when you look at... Now, you see this uh, screenshot right here? This kind of reminds me of Dragon Force, if you ever played that on the, the Saturn. That's actually a game I actually have on the Saturn. But, uh, you know, just that uh, screenshot right there reminded me of the battlefield. You know, some of the visuals you would see on Dragon Force. But, you know, never played it. It's a pretty cheap RPG when I got it. It's probably not that expensive now. But I've, I've heard this is good. Just never played it. Anyway, I guess Yidra. I guess I'm pronouncing that right. Yidra. Yidra Union. PSP. Here we have Metal Slug Anthology. I just printed cover art for this, but I've seen this game sell for like 20, 25 bucks. I guess this is uh, sought after on the PSP. It's got, you know, there's ports of Metal Slug on like every system. I could think of, except the only system I can't think of ports of Metal Slug for are for like the Genesis and like PC Engine and stuff like that, but. You know, any kind of current-gen system, there's got to be many ports of Metal Slug on there. But anyway, Metal Slug Anthology on the PSP. And that retro store in my area, here's a couple games that uh, they sell when they sell you just the UMD. And this is what they look like. I mean, they're, you know, it's cool they give you the case because you could print cover art, go on Etsy and buy some, like, decent cover art for a couple bucks and then slide them in the case. And then it looks, looks good, which is... My, my might do that with these games. But anyway... Here we got Steambot Chronicles Battle Tournament, and this isn't like a Steambot Chronicles, the RPG anyway. It's more of a, a battling game, but uh, you know, kind of a fun game. This one's probably thirteen bucks for the disc. I bet you can probably still find this for around that, but I bet complete this probably goes for a couple dollars just because Steambot Chronicles, right? And uh, Spectral Souls. Now this is one I actually never played. And uh, it's kind of pricey to pay for just a UMD, but I've heard a, a lot of people were telling me, not a lot, maybe a few, I don't know why I say a lot, but a few people told me that this Spectral Souls game is, like, if you're a hardcore RPG player, this game will, like, break your balls, right? Um, never played it, though. Never got around to playing it. Anyway, Spectral Souls in a generic case on the PSP. Here's one for Canadian Gamer. Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast now. That's what this game used to cost, and then I saw people talking about this on YouTube, and now it's probably, I don't know what this game goes for now, but this is uh, the copy I got. Bought this used at the flea market a while back, right? Outrun Coast, 2006 Coast to Coast. It's got the Ferrari sticker on there, but yeah, great game. You know, this game's known for its uh, heart attack mode, where the chick kind of tells you what to do in your car, and you have to perform your car in that way, and 
if you don't, you know, you won't win the race, and you know, she'll start smacking you and stuff, you, you lose the race, but yeah, OutRun 2006 Coast to Coast, you know, great game, never owned this on the original Xbox or on, the, I guess, PS2, I think this came out on as well, but got the PSP version, it's great. And this is the last game I'm going to show you, actually, no, I got one more. This is uh, Grow Lancer Wayfarer of Time. Um, I, you know, I got the Grow Lancer games on the PS2. I guess the ones that we got here in the U.S. I actually have. Um, I've heard great things about this game. One of, one of the YouTubers that I watch actually uh, like did a, a video about these great RPGs, and this was like at the top of the list, and I've known about this for a while. And uh, as soon as he did that video, I was like, fuck, I better get this now before, if, you know, in case there's none left, right? This was like around $30, and, you know, I... I uh, Hopefully I recommend this game at that $30 price point, but I haven't played this yet. I played the first two hours, and I liked what I played so far, but, you know, if you've played any of the Grow Lancer games, they're strategy RPGs. Um, they got that good late 80s, early 90s uh, style art. And, uh, the stories are good. Battle systems are good. So I, I recommend the Grow Lancer games on the PS2. But anyway, this is Grow Lancer, Wayfarer of Time. I don't think this game came in, like, a collector's edition, but it, if it did, I know the first two ones on the PS2 did. I'd like to have them, but anyway, Grow Lancer, Wayfarer of Time. Now, I got one more game. It's actually in this drawer here. I forgot to pull it out. I forgot to pull it out. That's what I tell the ladies. All right. Prenny, this is a uh, action platformer. This is uh, the collector's edition. Okay. When I got this, I got this from the flea market. This was a... Uh, pretty cheap game and i forget pretty this is a uh, characters from i think disgaea so yeah it's just a you know offshoot of disgaea there's a pretty too there's actually a sequel to this game i don't have that but I, i've seen that game sell for like a hundred dollars before i don't know if the price went down on that but i was like yeah screw that i'm not paying a hundred dollars for an action platformer but uh when i got this it was pretty cheap i don't know what it goes for now but anyway this is a uh, pretty can i really be the hero <laughs> on the psp but you guys, that's everything I got. You know, when I think, of, like I said, when I think about collecting, um, you know, the Vita and then especially the PSP as a system that I actually do collect for. And again, I don't want like a full collection of like every single PSP games, but like all the good ones I want. And I, I would look forward to, you know, buying some of those shooters on the PSP, those Japanese ones, but God damn, they're so expensive. Um, maybe if I find, maybe I'll start doing auctions for them and, getting lucky here or there because i would like to have a lot of those physically but you know thank god we can download the roms and play them on an sd cards because you know guys and these have kind of gone up in price lately but if you can get one of these for around 60 70 bucks you know get an sd card they're cheap pop it in there you just need a little converter um i'll show you real quick pop this one out and you can get these things on like ebay and stuff you get the psp memory card and then you know just load all your stuff on your little sd card right here slap it in there good to go it's easy to download the files to run the custom firmware and then you can pretty much like i said have all your roms and all your stuff you download it for all your retro systems all your ps1 games all your psp games can't recommend it enough anyways guys thanks for watching if you like this video let me know in the comments down below and let me know what you guys got on the psp if there's anything like crazy out there that i don't have you know let me know that way i can go out and get it anyways guys till next time peace out